What is up, Facebook Live? How's it going, everybody? Happy, what is today, Wednesday? Happy hump day. How's your Wednesday going? I am driving home in some traffic on H1, headed eastbound, coming back from Coppola and cleaning, driving about five miles an hour. It's 87 degrees, sun is starting to go down, getting that golden hour. It's a pretty drive, at least. But yeah, today's been a little bit of a crazy day. I am lecturing this week in the School of Missions and Evangelism on fundraising, and I'm having a good time. I'm really enjoying that. And uh, yeah, the school is great because they are all headed long-term to Cambodia. So fundraising is going to be a little different than their normal, I'm going on a short-term missions trip and I've got to raise X amount of dollars for the whole entire trip. Now they've got to figure out how to raise enough funds to not only survive there, but thrive there for two years. So it's been a fun, it's been a lot of fun interacting uh, with that class and just imparting some of the knowledge that I picked up throughout the years of fundraising. A huge thank you to everyone that has partnered with us throughout the years so that we can continue to do the ministry that God has called us to. Thank you guys so much for your prayers and support in that area. Um, Justice School is going great, the Biblical Core Course. Um, They are in their third week, I think, and they're doing uh, the King's Week. So they're looking at the period of the Kings, the Northern and Southern Kingdom, United and Divided Kingdom, and uh, diving into that. So that's going well as well. Um, Yeah, I said today's been a little bit of a crazy day. I lectured this morning in the School of Missions Evangelism on fundraising. And then we had a friend over who is living on island that was a former YWAMer friend of ours. And she is amazing because she has a sewing machine and she's going to help us out by hemming some of our curtains. So we've got some window air conditioning units and I get really frustrated because the curtains hang down past the air conditioning unit and then you have to like try to like tuck it in above it and sometimes it falls and then if it falls it it blocks the ac unit and then condensation builds up and drops water all over the floor and then you're not getting the ac and and that's frustrating so and it just never seems to really stay where you want it to stay so i reached out to her and asked her if she still had a sewing machine because i knew that she sewed and luckily she does and so she's going to help us out by uh (laughs) by uh yeah hemming So uh, I just got asked if I could please stop making so many live videos. Um, No, but uh, thank you for asking. You are free to not watch these if you don't want to watch these. Uh, So yeah, we were talking about um, support raising. And uh, that's that's actually something that I told my class is that people say funny things sometimes. Well-meaning people say funny things, especially when it comes to support raising and just to to be, be ready to to embrace that people are going to say funny things. I think that's just part of life. So, um, yeah, that's, a that's, that's just part of it. So, um, yep. Yeah, our, so our curtains are going to get hemmed. So we had her over for lunch and got to connect with her. She just had a baby as well. So it was great to meet the new baby. Um, and then I drove out to Capole and cleaned a, um, construction site. And now I am driving back and fighting this traffic to get back into town so that I can have a worship practice at my house for church this Sunday. So yeah, a little bit of a, of a busy day. But one of the questions that I asked my, uh, students in the school of missions and evangelism this week is what's going to make you quit. How can we identify these things? And I shared with them one of my favorite Proverbs, which is Proverbs 21, five that says, Uh, The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to ruin or poverty. So yeah, if you come up with a plan and you're diligent to follow that plan, if you take action on that plan, then you're going to be prosperous and you're going to get the results that you're looking for. But if you just kind of rush into something quickly, then, you know, it's probably not going to have the best results. So as these guys are thinking about going longer term, um, I think their their initial commitment is two years over to Cambodia to do missions work, to partner with Youth With Mission there, and to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ 
in that country to partner with uh, local missionaries there. Um, I asked them the question, you know, what is going to make you quit? What's going to make you come off the come off the field? And one of those things is finances. If you don't have enough finances and you're constantly worried about finances, then you're going to end up coming home and just uh, getting a different job. So that's that's one of the things that we've got to figure out and we've got to plan for and we've got to learn how to invite people to partner with us as we do worldwide missions work, which was the final command of Jesus, go into all the earth and preach the gospel to all nations, all nations. So that's, uh, yeah, Jesus' words, not mine. <laughs> so yeah, that's something, um, finances was one of those things, drama was another thing, um, just dealing with with your team, dealing with uncommunicated expectations, dealing with things cross-culturally, you know, that wears on you pretty quickly. And so that's another thing. And then we talked about trauma as well. And uh, we looked up things like the, you know, what does the CIA factbook, world factbook have to say about the country that we're headed to? Um, and can we mitigate against any of the potential chaos? Can we make sure that we're carrying some stuff in our bag when we're doing village outreaches just to make sure that we have a more ready response to trauma um, because most likely the emergency uh, medical services are not going to be as good in Southeast Asia and a third world country as they are here in the United States. And so we might be our own first responder. And so how are we just going to make sure that we have the training and the gear on us that if we have to take care of something like that, we can take care of it. And so just looking into some of those options. I have a question for you guys. Maybe someone knows. Actually, I can see Derek, you're watching this. I think you'll know you've done a lot of international travel. When you go to a country, does the embassy of your home nation know that you're there or do you have to notify them? I assume you have to notify them because there's so many people traveling at all times that there's no way that they could keep a ready. I mean, maybe they could nowadays with all the technology, but my guess is they probably are pretty understaffed. So, um, Derek, if you could comment and let me know uh, if you know the answer to that or anybody else that's watching this as well, um, let me know if, if uh, what, the, what the status is with embassies as you're traveling overseas. So, yeah, what do you think is going to make you quit? And can you identify those things? And can you come up with a plan now to make sure that you're going to fulfill the call that God has on your life. So that's just a little update about what's going on. And yeah, Derek's saying that you have to notify the embassy. That's great. So yeah, something else that I'm thinking about right now is just, is just action. You have to take action. So I'm teaching um, this week and I'm giving lots of information, but if they don't take ownership of the information that I'm giving them and do something with it, right? I've told that I, you know, I even showed them the U S embassy. Some of them are Canadian, but I asked them to look up their embassy information. Um, you know, if they're not taking the time to print that out, to look at the CIA world Factbook to figure out what the nine one one, the emergency number equivalent is in Cambodia. These are all things that they, that would probably be a good thing to prepare on. But if they don't take ownership of that and write those things down, or at least screenshot it on their phone and favorite it. So it's readily accessible um, when you need it, then, uh, you know, then my teaching hasn't done a, a whole lot of good. So how do I, as a teacher, inspire them to actually take action and do these things? And how do they also just take ownership and do it? So yeah, what action do you need to take in whatever you're learning in the season? What's the one thing that you need to do? So Derek, thanks for that comment. I'm driving right now, so I cannot uh, read that, but I will check that out when I get home. All right, guys, comment and say hello. Let me know where you are watching from. And thanks so much um, for watching. And don't worry about people that say funny stuff to you. And just keep doing what you're doing and what you're called to. All right, guys, thanks a lot. See ya.